Hi, physio students. This is a brief, simple introduction to the nervous system. A lot of basic terminology is what you're going to be learning about. I didn't think we needed to do it in class with me explaining it. You'll be fine all on your own, so let's get started. Go ahead and fill in the information on your note template provided in class. Hey guys, this is a great six minute little video to get you motivated and interested in the nervous system. Your brain always learns better when it's interested. So take a few minutes to watch this YouTube video. Um, great graphics. I think you'll enjoy it. Our learning targets for this particular lecture are um, that you know the general functions of the nervous system. You're going to learn the basic anatomy of a neuron. We're going to learn how Schwann cells and myelination help the function of a neuron. You're going to know the different structural types of neurons and the different functional types of neurons. Neural tissue or nervous tissue is composed of only two types of cells. They're the neurons and the neuroglial cells. The picture at the right is showing you a basic multipolar neuron. There are two divisions of the nervous system. There's the central nervous system which includes the brain and the spinal cord. And there's the peripheral nervous system, which ends all of those nerves branching from the brain and spinal cord. And they're out here in the periphery, down our extremities. Those include the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. Our nervous system carries out three main functions, sensory, integrative, and motor. So the sensory function, sensory function, is all of the information coming from our peripheral nervous system gathered by our eyes and our ears and our taste buds and our nose and our fingertips. All of our sensory input going into our central nervous system. So we can send you know, how loud that sound was we just heard. What color are those leaves that we're looking at? How prickly was the um, outside of the leaf that we were just feeling? So all of that sensory information needs to go into our central nervous system to be processed. The processing is the integrative function. So now all of that information has come in, that sensory information has come in, and we are going to determine that sensation. Was that a sound? Was it a light sensation? Was it a texture sensation? How strong was that pain? Was it a bright color or a dim color? We're going to look into our memory banks and see what else we know about what we just saw or what we just heard. We're going to have thoughts about it. We're going to make decisions about that information. So Everything going on in our brain is an integrative function. All of that processing of that sensory information is integrative. Then we tend to act on that information. And that gets us over here into our motor function. So now the brain has made sense of all of that incoming information. And it's going to tell the body what to do about it. So we're going to send messages out to what we call our effectors. And that's our muscles and our glands. So the brain is now telling the body, so information is going back out on those peripheral nerves, the brain is telling the body what to do. It's telling the muscles, it's telling the glands what to do. This beautiful structure is a neuron. This is a brain cell, a nerve cell. It is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system. What that means is your nervous system structurally is made primarily of neurons. Functionally, it does the work of what the nervous system does. So your nervous system's job is to send impulses. This is the thing that does that. Neurons send those impulses. They are your body's wiring that sends electricity around that gets stuff done. So we're going to learn a lot about these neurons and how they work. They are responsive to physical changes, like a mechanical touch can cause them to fire off. They are also responsive to chemical changes, low 
oxygen levels can cause them to fire off. So they are very responsive about what is going on inside and outside the body, and they will send an impulse as they respond. So we need to learn the anatomy of this guy. So there's some important structures I want to point out to you right now. So this right here is the cell body. So like all cells, it has a nucleus which holds the DNA. It has all of those little organelles that you learned back in biology. Let's see if these sound familiar. There's mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum and cytoplasm. So we see all of those organelles inside of this cell. This cell has receptive ends out here. These structural ends right here are called dendrites. They respond to those changes in the outside environment or inside environment. Those physical and chemical changes are received right here on this dendrite end. If there's enough of a stimulus to get this guy to respond, it will send an impulse down this long branching end here, which is called the axon. So impulses start up here at the dendrite end and then travel down the axon. The end of the axon is called the synaptic knob. There are special helper cells right here sitting on our axon. These little cells are called Schwann cells, and we're going to learn about what they do. The little gaps in between right here are called nodes of Ranvier. So there's a little anatomy to get you started. Uh, hopefully you'll know the basics of a neuron by tomorrow. This is just another picture of a neuron. The red underlined names or labeled parts are the ones that I would like you to know for tomorrow. So just go back over them again right now and try to get them uh, stored in that memory bank up there. I mentioned the Schwann cell as a helper cell. So we see two different Schwann cells right here. And remember the gap in between them is called the node of Ranvier. So Schwann cells are found in our peripheral nervous system and they wrap around the axon. They kind of act um, as an insulative fatty structure that doesn't allow ions to pass through. So what that essentially does is it makes signals jump down the axon. They jump from node to node to node. So they get to sort of skip. Boing, 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 boing. So as they hop from node to node, they get to bypass a lot of the length of that axon, which can essentially speed the signal up. So our impulse moves more quickly down a myelinated axon than it does an unmyelinated axon. And we call that jumping impulse saltatory conduction. Myelinated brain tissue or spinal cord tissue appears white. Unmyelinated tissue appears gray. So we can tell when we're looking at the brain or the spinal cord whether we're looking at myelinated axons or whether we're looking at unmyelinated cell bodies and dendrites. So we have a nice cross section through the skull and brain and we're looking at white matter and gray matter. So we've got white matter in the interior here and we know that that is myelinated and the myelination is on the axons. Outside in this last half inch of the brain, this is called our cortex or gray matter. And there we're looking at unmyelinated axons and, or excuse me, unmyelinated cell bodies and dendrites. So neurons can be classified by their structure or their function. And here we're looking at different structures of neurons. So the most common type is the multipolar, multi for many, and what we see is many branches here coming off of the cell body. That is primarily found in the central nervous system and our motor neurons, which we'll learn more about, are also multipolar. That's the one you're gonna have to learn how to label. Bipolar, bi, four, two, 
means there are two branches or processes coming off of the cell body. Those are less common neurons. They're primarily found in the eyes, ears, and nose. And then unipolar, uni for one, means there's one, you can see it right there, one little process coming off of that cell body. And those are also less common. Those are your sensory neurons found out in your peripheral nervous system. So if we look at their functions, the neurons have three functions. There are the sensory neurons, which carry impulses to the central nervous system. And again, there mostly are unipolar neurons. There are the interneurons, which have an integrative function. Those are all of those neurons that are processing the information up inside of our central nervous system, up in our brain. They're the you know, doing the thinking and figuring out what all that sensory information means, making the decisions. And then we have our motor neurons, which have the motor function. They are carrying impulses out from the brain and spinal cord, out to the effectors, those muscles and glands, to make the body do something. So in our graphic right here, we have all of those types of neurons. So we have a little graphic representation. Here we have our uh, dendrites picking up sensory information. That sensory information is being carried to the central nervous system. So we're in the brain and spinal cord here, and we're here with our interneurons doing our integrative function. And again, these are primarily multipolar neurons. Then we're going to make some decisions. We're going to act on them, and we're going to send that information back out of the central nervous system on our motor neurons that are heading out to our effectors, our muscles, and our glands. And these are primarily uh, multipolar neurons as well.